let's now look at this question. The spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa, that's the sperms, by the process of A, spermatogenesis, B, spermiogenesis, C, spermiation, D, oogenesis. Okay? So, what do you call when the spermatozoa is formed from the spermatids, right? The transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa, what is it called? That's what you need to identify. Okay. Now, first and foremost, we need to understand what is spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is nothing but the formation of sperms. Now, where are these sperms formed? The sperms are formed in the testis, in the male reproductive system of humans. Correct. Now, how is it formed? Now, in the testis, there are highly coiled tubules called as the seminiferous tubules. And these seminiferous tubules are lined by special kinds of cells. One are the germ cells or the spermatogonia deployed in nature. And the other are the Sertoli cells or the nurse cells. I'll talk about that later. Now, these spermatogonial cells undergo meiosis to form four sperms. So, that is spermatogenesis. Now, what does this involve? This involves mitotic division, it involves meiotic division and it also involves the transformation of a non-motile cell into a motile cell. For example, a non-motile spermatid into a motile spermatozoa and that process is called as spermiogenesis. Now, let me explain it to you a little bit more in detail and what you do see here is the diagrammatic representation of spermatogenesis. So, the first step, like I told you, is the germ cells or the spermatogonia, they undergo mitosis. They start multiplying. Some of the cells start differentiating and they form what is called as the primary spermatocytes. Now, remember children, spermatogonia or the germ cells are deployed. They are undergoing mitosis. That means the daughter cells are also deployed. And I said some of them differentiate into the primary spermatocytes. So, if I say this is differentiating into primary spermatocytes, the primary spermatocyte is also deployed. Now, this primary spermatocyte undergoes the first meiotic division to give rise to two haploid secondary spermatocytes. And the secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 to form four haploid daughter cells that are called as spermatids. So, you are looking at each secondary spermatocyte giving rise to two spermatids. So, totally there are four spermatids that are formed. Now, these don't have a tail. These are not capable of swimming, right? Now, we are going to see what is going to happen in the trans, you know, how this is going to become a motile gamete. Now, these spermatids transform by the process called as spermiogenesis from a non-motile form to a motile form, that is the sperms which are capable of swimming. And that phenomenon is called as spermiogenesis. Okay, can you see that? A round cell has now become an elongated cell which has a tail also. That's because they swim. Now, after spermiogenesis, that means after the formation of the sperm, these Sperms embed themselves into the cells. I told you, remember Sertoli cells? These Sertoli cells are also called as nurse cells. So, the head of the sperm embeds itself into the Sertoli cells and obtains its nourishment. Once its nourishment is obtained, once it gets it, it gets released from the Sertoli cells. Now, I told you Sertoli cells and spermatogonia are lining the seminiferous tubules. So, from there, it gets released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules, right? Outside the seminiferous tubules and that process is called as permeation. So, Sertoli cells are also called as nurse cells because they are providing nourishment. Then you came across a name called oogenesis. Now, if spermatogenesis is the formation of the male gamete, oogenesis is the formation of the female gamete. And what you see there is the diagrammatic representation of the Formation of female gamete, that is oogenesis. Okay. So now when you look at this question, the spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa, that is the sperms, by the process of 
spermiogenesis. Yes, B is the right answer. You can eliminate A, C and D. B is the right answer. Let's now look at this new question. Mark the correct statements. 1. Spermatogenesis starts at puberty. 2. Spermatogonia are deployed. 3. Primary spermatozoid. 3. Primary spermatocytes are haploid. Your options A says 1 and 2 are correct. B says 1, 2 and 3 are correct. C says only 1 is correct. And D says only 2 and 3 are correct. Let's start with the formation of the sperms which is called as spermatogenesis. And in humans, the, it starts at the time of, you know, around the age of 10 to 14 which we call as the age of puberty. Or that is when sexual maturity sets in. So spermatogenesis which is the formation of the haploid sperms starts at puberty in humans. Okay, and what you see here is a diagrammatic representation of the entire process of spermatogenesis. So, now where are these sperms formed from? The sperms are formed from diploid germ cells called as spermatogonia. They undergo mitotic divisions and some of them differentiate into primary spermatocytes and these primary spermatocytes are also deployed. So, if this is spermatogonia, it undergoes mitotic divisions. Okay. Let's say it undergoes mitotic divisions like this. And some of them differentiate into primary spermatocytes. So, let's say this differentiates into primary spermatocytes. So, this is the primary spermatocytes and the ploidy is diploid, not haploid. So, the DNA content remains the same. Both spermatogonia and primary spermatocytes are diploid. Okay. So, now some of the spermatogonia, like I said, they differentiate and where do they get their nourishment from? From the Sertoli cells or the nurse cells. So, now in this question, which are the correct statements? First, let's look at it. Spermatogenesis starts at puberty. Yes, one is correct. Spermatogonia are deployed. Yes, two is correct. Primary spermatocytes are haploid. No, this is incorrect. So, only 1 and 2 are correct. Option A. A is the right answer. You can eliminate B, C and D. A is the right answer. This is a diagram question. You can see the da image that is given there. You need to identify A, B and C in the image that is given below. Okay. Now, all of you can make out that it is the diagram image of a human sperm. So, you need to identify A, B and C. The options that you need to choose from A has A is the neck, B is the middle piece, C is the acrosome. B, A is acrosome, B is middle piece, C is tail. C, A is acrosome, B is head, C is tail. D, A is head, B is mitochondria and C is the middle piece. Let me show you the sperm image. Now, this is the human sperm. Now, this is divisible into three regions, the head, the middle piece or the mid piece and the tail. Now, I'm going to elaborate it a little bit more. This is the head. Now, if you look carefully, the head is a cap, has a cap-like structure. Okay, towards the tip, can you see this? This is the acrosome. It's a cap-like structure. Now, this acrosome is very important because it contains enzymes. Now, these enzymes are very important for, to help the sperm penetrate the ovum. Now, the ovum is not just freely exposed. It's covered by a number of membranes. So, the sperm has to dissolve these membranes and reach you know, the male gamete, the male nucleus has to fuse with the female nucleus. So, to dissolve those membranes, these enzymes are very important, which is released by the acrosome, which you find in the anterior part of the sperm head. Now, the sperms we know is motile, right? The tail helps in the swimming. So, the middle piece, you see that it has a number of mitochondria. Now, what are mitochondria commonly called as? Powerhouse of the cell. Why do you think there are so many mitochondria in the sperm? to give energy for the motility of the sperm. And finally comes the tail, which helps in the movement of the sperm. So now, if you look at the image, A is the acrosome, which has the enzyme. B is the middle piece and C is the tail. So, A acrosome, B middle piece, C is the tail. So your right option is option B. A acrosome, B middle piece, C is tail. You can eliminate A, 
C and D. B is the right answer. A fill in the blanks question for you. Graphene follicle contains dash. A primary oocyte, B secondary oocyte, C ovum, D both A and B. Well, a graphene follicle is nothing but a mature follicle. And this is formed from the tertiary follicle. So the graphene follicle develops from the tertiary follicle and it has a secondary oocyte which is formed from the primary oocyte. Okay, that's what a graphene follicle has. So this graphene follicle ruptures and releases this secondary oocyte and that process is called as ovulation. Now this secondary oocyte will complete the meiosis too and becomes the ovum only after it comes in contact with sperm. So once the entry of sperm takes place into the ovum, into the secondary oocyte, now it gets transformed into the ovum, the mature ovum and a secondary polar body is formed from the secondary oocyte. So this question, graphene follicle contains what? It contains B, the secondary oocyte. We can eliminate A, C and D. B is the right answer. Choose the incorrect option. That's your new question. A, primary oocyte is diploid. B, secondary oocyte is haploid. C, spermatid is diploid. D, spermatogonia is diploid. I'm sure all of you all already marked the answer. So we need to choose the incorrect option. Well, the diploid oogonial cells which are found in the ovary, right? They differentiate into primary oocytes. So they differentiate into cells called as the primary oocyte. And the primary oocyte is also diploid. Okay, the primary oocyte is diploid. The primary oocyte now undergoes meiosis 1 and gives rise to a haploid secondary oocyte. So primary oocyte is diploid, secondary oocyte is haploid. Now this is in the case of oogenesis. When you look at spermatogenesis, the spermatogonia are diploid and they undergo mitotic division to form many cells and some of them differentiate to form the primary spermatocytes and the primary spermatocytes are also diploid. Okay, so spermatogonia are diploid, primary spermatocytes are also diploid and primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 1 to give rise to two haploid secondary spermatocytes. The secondary spermatocytes will then undergo meiosis 2 and give rise to four haploid spermatids. Now here you can see the diagrammatic representation of C. You can see the diagrammatic representation of spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So which is the right option? The right option which is nothing but the incorrect option is the fact that spermatids are diploid. No, spermatids are not diploid. Spermatids are haploid. So this is the incorrect option. A, B and D are correct. So we eliminate them. C, spermatid which is given as diploid is wrong. So C is the right answer.